All right. Welcome to another Clubs and Corks Golf Podcast. Luke Taylor here, as always, with Ben Curtis. And and I'm excited. I love I love how you do the Queen wave. Well, you, got, you know, I'm yeah. half Arnold Palmer, half yeah, whatever Jack it Nicholas, is. Yeah, you know. whatever it is. <laughs> so we got a, a guest that actually took money from me. This this guy took money from me. I did. At Forest Dunes, we played the 19th hole where Lou Thompson says, "What do you settle all bets?" And he comes in, and and it was funny. My buddy, who actually owns these buildings where we're we're sitting right now, said, "Who is that?" And I said, "It's the guy from that you're wearing is his shirt." And the shirt was 25 year old. It used to be probably white, now cream colored Ashworth shirt. So we got John Ashworth. John Ashworth, yeah. welcome to the Clubs and Corks Golf Podcast. Well, nice to be with you, boys. Yeah. Yeah. So you actually have some history with him, supposedly. Yeah, we do. Um, well, obviously, he's going to remember. And obviously, I remember. But for our guests and our, you know, our fans out there that, uh, you know, back, I, I mean, I grew up watching Fred Couples, Payne Stewart, and all those guys. And I remember when Ashworth and Cookie came out with their Ashworth gear on and uh, used to be, I used to wear it when I was a junior golfer. And then somehow uh, when I turned pro, I got was lucky enough to wear one of your brands. Was it Fidra or Feed? How, I, we, we always had this debate, <laughs> people, like, how do you, how is it pronounced? But uh, when I won the Open in 03, was wearing uh, Fidra, as I call it. But uh, yeah. is that correct? Or? Uh, either way, I call it Fidra, but a lot of people called it Fidra. <laughs> um, and I don't know if you knew where that came from. Did you ever know where that came from? I uh, you have to refresh me. I'm sure I did. It was, uh, it was, it was, it was, I spent time in Scotland on the East Lothian coastline and, um, I was doing this development, this golf course sort of, there was two, there was two old links courses that had disappeared that dated back into the 1800s and they were sort of over time, you know, World War One, World War Two, they were gone. And it was right next door to the home of the Honorable Company. There was a little, or there was a, a thousand acre estate called Archerfield. And right off that, uh, right off that piece of land was a little island and lighthouse called Fidra. Okay. And it was where Robert Louis Stevenson, as a kid, used to hang out there. His father was a lighthouse keeper. And that apparently was the inspiration for the his novel, uh, Treasure Island. Oh, wow. So, That's cool. A little bit of story. And then, yeah. and then, yeah, you know, Ben, I don't know. I don't know if we've ever actually been in the same room together. Have we? Have we met? We met one time. I think it was at Pebble, I believe, of all. Places. Oh, at Pebble? Yeah. For the I know AT&T. it was really weird. That it was we my rookie really year. Said. It was actually before I won the Open. It was right. Yeah, yeah. And uh, you know, and then yeah, you were you were. Did you win the Open your second year then, or your? No, it was my rookie year. Oh, your rookie year. Yeah, two thousand three. So I yeah. actually wore. I was wearing the stuff for a couple of years playing the mini tours, yeah. um, and then obviously uh, wore it first couple of years on tour. So yeah. I was actually in Ireland at a little pub watching you win the open. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> it was great. Yeah. Uh, you won it, huh? Th- yeah, it's right there. Oh. That's yeah. not the real thing, though. Well, it's my copy, but yeah. it's right there. I wonder what Thomas Bjorn got for a second. <laughs> Oh, nice check. But. Yeah. <laughs> that's the best turn. By the way, that's by far the best tournament to win. Everybody goes, what tournament would you rather yeah. win? That is the one. Yeah. The open really? For me, I put, I put more into that than anything for sure. Mine would be the Nathan's hot dog uh, competition on Coney Island. <laughs> you do well, man. You I know. Sign up. No, I wouldn't. <laughs> no, I wouldn't. So you've got it. You've got an interesting story. You were quite the golfer. I hear. I played in college. Yeah, we went to where? Arizona State, right? University of Arizona. (laughs) Just making sure. Shut up. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. So he's a wildcat. He's a wildcat. He's not a devil. He's a wildcat. No. And they have a – were you there when Jim Furyk was there? No, I'm I'm a geezer. I'm way older than Furyk. Oh, nice. Did you play play against Arnold Palmer then when he was at Wake Forest? (laughs) No, he was a kid. (laughs) (laughs) So who were some of your teammates at Arizona? You know, none of none of our crew were really tour caliber. I mean, we were okay, but we were not. We didn't have any standouts really. I mean, Dan Myers, he was our best player back 
when I played, but he, he got injured and never really went on. And then um, Mike Cunning, did you ever run into Mike Cunning over the years? He played in Asia for like 20 years. Okay. Uh, but, uh, you know, I, I, I played the same time as Corey Pavin. Oh, yeah. You know, he played at UCLA. Uh, you know, Fred Couples were the same age. Uh, gotcha. And actually, that he's he, he's one of the reasons I, I thought I don't have a chance to go pro. I can't play in that game. <laughs> well, you set the standard for Arizona, right, for the excellence that they have. You know, because yeah. when I was in school, I mean, they were phenomenal. You know. Oh, they were amazing, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they were amazing after, uh, you know, I guess that would have been, uh, what, mid early 90s or yeah i mean i i graduated in late 90s well 2000 yeah, mid 90s. but but yeah. the, i mean they were really you know ricky yeah. barnes and you know yeah, ricky barnes you know so yeah it was a uh sabatini was there right yeah sabatini early, gamez yeah uh Furek, uh yeah yeah, a bunch of guys. Well, that's what I tell people all the time because I have a little golf academy now and I tell kids all the time, like Furek was I mean, I mean, obviously when he was playing, Arizona was pretty good, but he, he was in and out of the lineup. He didn't play that much. And right. you know, I tell people all the time, and then he goes on at the time, he was, I don't know, he's probably still top ten in career money earnings on the PJ tour. But I right. said, you know, you want to peak at twenty five. You don't necessarily need to peak at, <laughs> when did at you eighteen peak? and yeah. at twenty six. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> But, I, I mean, 12. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm still peaking. Yeah. So, you know, there's a lot of the stuff that I work on with them is to hopefully get them to that point down mm -hmm. the road, more mental stuff than, it, you know, you don't, if you're 12, like you say, 12, you don't need to be shooting your best score. Hopefully you can continue that on into college and then keep improving in pro, right? I mean, it's very, yeah. make your living. So anyway. What, what, what I love is he was like a really, it sounded like you were a really successful PGA tour caddy for about a year. Caddied for a year. Yeah. <laughs> what, what was that like? I, it was great. It was amazing. You know, it was back in 1984 and caddied for my friend, Mark Wiebe. We grew up together and uh, he was just, he was trying to get his card. And back then you could actually, um, you could actually go to tour school twice a year. And he was wow. 0 for 6. And he said, and I was kind of waffling. I was out of college. I didn't know what I was doing. And I was actually an assistant pro at a golf course uh, called Fairbanks Ranch out here on the on the West Coast, and uh, and he said, "Why don't you come caddy for me on these mini tours that he dominated, and then uh, and then we'll go do tour school, you know, the the sectional, regional, final, which was at TPC Sawgrass, and uh, and I said, I'm in, let's do it. You know, he had a sponsor, he could pay me." You know, a couple hundred bucks a week, which back then sort of made it ends me, but not quite. Um, so he got it. You know, we went through that, and then he got his card, and off we went. And uh, but he's he, you know, he had a rough he had a rough rookie year. I mean, he uh, he probably made I don't know twenty grand. Wow. You know, so I was living in my car half the time, <laughs> but it was but it but it was great. You know, twenty. Right. 23 years old, not a care in the world. And, uh, Were you guys driving then still, or were you flying? Yeah, I was driving. He, he, okay. he flew most of the time, but, uh, you know, and then, you know, a lot of, he didn't get in a lot of tournaments. So I'd try to go pick up back then. You could actually go in the parking lot and try to, you know, pick up a bag for the week. <laughs> they I've still my, do that. They still do that. Do they really? Do they? Oh, I mean, so I have a I, chance. The last event I played in 17, I showed up and there there's probably 15 caddies coming. They, yeah. they know the guys that aren't, you know, I mean, Don't I was struggling at that point. So they're like, there's 20 guys come running up. Hey, really? you need a bag this week. What do you got? <laughs> you know, who's working for you? What you? If you don't yeah. get, not this week, how about next week? Yeah. Really? So, yeah. I should get my business card ready. <laughs> we'll walk for four holes. Yeah. Trade for food. To, yeah. <laughs> you'll, you'll get distracted by the stand over there. Yeah. Yeah. The hot dog stand. So it's interesting. You went from caddying to working at a high, a high end sports retail store in, in uh, Colorado. Yeah. And then you got this brilliant idea to do clothing. And it's funny because you thought there wasn't really a good niche for solid clothing. And I feel like that now we had this conversation at Forest Dunes. You said, oh, you should try some of the Link Soul. 
and I and I sh- showed you I'm very colorful and colorful pants. I said, John, no offense. Do you think I would wear? I don't think it's colorful enough for you. And you're like, yeah, you're probably right. <laughs> but it's not really. You need a plus size model. Just saying. <laughs> you're miss. You're missing a key segment. Yeah. Demographics of golf plus size. See, like, look at this. I, I'm your guy. No doubt about it. No I won't be able to fit in anything, but you know, we could do it. So how did you go from Denver to, to kind of bringing up Ashworth? Well, um, let me just dial back way back. I, uh, yeah, the guy that I went to work for in Denver was actually Mark Weeby's sponsor. We got to be good friends, you know, catting for Weebs and, and, uh, Jerry Montiel and, uh, <clears throat> He was a really, you know, he was an experienced business guy, entrepreneur. So I was very lucky. I got to really kind of, he was a mentor. And and uh, unfortunately for him in the mid 80s, the, uh, his, his venture in this retail store, uh, it wasn't working out so hot. So he ended up deciding, he had two stores, he decided to close them down. And he said to me, he said, John, you help you st- stick around and help me close these down, which was a big pain in the ass. Uh, <laughs> then we'll figure out another business to do, you know? So I didn't have anything going on. I said, absolutely. I'll help you do that. So I, you know, we went through the process of, you know, dealing with all the crap that you got to deal with when you do that. And then, uh, and then out the other end, he said, well, if you were going to start a business, what would you do? And I said, well, you know, I've, I've been playing golf my whole life and there's just such crappy gear, you know, that for for my opinion, there wasn't a lot of good choices for a guy, you know, my age and, you know, older, younger, whatever to uh, that I thought was, um, you know, comfortable and and easy to wear and all that stuff. So, and he, he kind of, he wasn't, he was kind of a high handicap, not much of a golfer, but he played a little bit of golf but he was like, bingo. I, you know, I can see that. That's a, that's a good idea. Let's, let's do that. And so off we went, really, we raised a little bit of money and I moved to LA and, and kind of went through the process of figuring out, you know, school of hard knocks, how to do it. I mean, I didn't have an education for it, but (laughs) luckily it's not rocket science, you know? So, so what year was that? That would have been 1987. Oh, wow. 1987. And then, so now did you, were you the design focus or did you? I was the design and merchandising focus. You know, I moved out to LA and uh, I kind of had a vision of what I'd like to do, but I didn't know how to do it. Uh, And uh, I did hire a couple of young gals, really one that was in design and one that was in production. Uh, And we, we set up shop in a little studio out there and um, and just cobbled together the first sample line. And then I put it in my car and went out to all my buddies, you know, that I knew were in the golf business, right. and, you know, and they felt so sorry for me that they bought it, you know. So. <laughs> Do you know who was the first who was the first uh, customer? First customer on the West Coast was a buddy of mine at La Jolla Country Club, Rick Riley and uh, oh. Who was it? Who was it? You know that tournament in Hawaii, right? Yeah. That you saw met my brother, uh, yeah. and uh, but yeah, no, I was. Uh, it was. I look back and I just think, oh my god, we're so lucky to you know one step at a time. But we we made it through the the phase of not really knowing what the hell you're doing, you know. To and then <laughs> we kind of got on a roll and figured out how to do it and. Uh, you know, we went and talked to Fred Couples right away. You know, I knew him from college a little bit and John Cook. And I felt like if if we got two guys that really embodied what we're trying to do, it was really going to help, you know, sort of magnify our our whole approach and our whole brand. And sure enough, that happened. And those guys, those guys went on to play great. And then we, in the process, picked up, you know, Ernie Els and Dave Stockton and just kind of just sort of steam, you know, steamrolled. And it was, uh, it was quite a run. It's quite a run. Yeah. yeah. I think it was the, you know, the, yeah. the uh, Fred couples Betty. pulling up the sleeve kind of thing that put you guys on the map for sure. Totally. And, 
So 92, was that the beginning or was that, or you were out a few years, obviously at that point, but was that yeah, the no, peak? 92 was a big year when he won the masters for sure. We just kind of went on this trajectory that was, it was already set up, but it, that was like putting gas on the fire, you know? Yeah. Uh, it's funny about when he did, he does that whole thing, you know, yeah. <laughs> I, I used to try to get him to wear like, I think large shirts, but he wore extra large shirts because he wanted it real baggy because so he could do that. It was like, <laughs> and then everybody started wearing their clothes really baggy. Oh yeah. Yeah. Fred, Fred couples, I think started the whole hip hop culture <laughs> with the baggy clothing. Yeah. I don't know about that. <laughs> yeah. Well, that, that is funny how you mentioned that. So he actually, I thought it was just a style, right. But it was more, that was just more the way he wanted it. The way he wanted it. The way he wanted it. That's yeah. interesting. Yeah. I didn't know that. I thought it was just the style. I thought, well, okay, we're all wearing baggy clothes. Tiger came out. His clothes were baggy, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. I know. I mean, now it's like, how tight can you get them? So. Right. I know. It's crazy. It's funny. Yeah. I don't know. I don't yeah. like to see you in tight clothes. <laughs> European medium. No. Yeah. Yeah. So you got, you sold to Ashworth. What did you kind of do in between the whole Ashworth to Link well, Soul? We were a public, we went public also. We were a public, okay. I didn't really sell it. We were a public company and uh, and it, it was about the 10th year. Or so me and my partner sort of, I don't know if I was getting burnt out. It was kind of a lot of work for that 10 years. And, and, and he was kind of getting, losing, losing his pizzazz and, we were going through a little bit of a rough patch and, and we had a board of directors and all that stuff. And, you know, being public's not a lot of fun. I don't know if you guys know much about that, but you know, what are you going to do next quarter? And what, you know, right. what, you know it's we should do that for the podcast. We should go public yeah. have are, stocks, stocks public. and clubs and quirks. <laughs> yeah, you should penny stocks. Yeah, penny stocks. <laughs> well, we, we started as a penny stock really. Yeah. Like 75 cents a share seriously so yeah. there's hope for us yeah you could do it we get at least 45 cents <laughs> so is it still public today or is no it so eventually i i ended up leaving in year 11 right i just i could we we brought a guy in and he and i didn't get along and i i went i had an opportunity to go over to scotland to work on this golf course project which is what i did right. and then the, the company kept going on and Eventually, and I think it was 2007, they sold to Adidas, who ran them right into the ground. But <laughs> wonderful. <laughs> yeah. So, is it still out there? I think I see it's well, still it's surviving, Adidas, right? Adidas finally sold it. Well, Adidas sold it to TaylorMade when a company bought TaylorMade, and then. And then TaylorMade sold it to the Chinese distributor. And then a guy locally here just got the rights for North America. So you might start seeing it again. Nice. It did disappear really though. Yeah. Sounds like an episode of Days of Our Lives. <laughs> yeah. Gosh. So, so how that's gotta be weird to see your shirt, your name out there, but have nothing to really do with it, right? So to speak. I mean, are you is there royalties in that part of the business? I don't. You know. Unfortunately, unfortunately no. not. That's, <laughs> uh, that's crazy. That's crazy. Yeah. And then so Ashworth ended, and then that's when you got into Fedra, right? Yeah, a few a few years later. Yeah. Okay. A few years later, and that that was I don't know if you remember or not, Ben, but that was with Quicksilver, the surfwear company. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And then that kind of. That, that went sideways when Quicksilver, again, a big public company, they bought Rosignol Ski Company, who actually owned Cleveland Golf, <laughs> which was actually a mile down the road from Quicksilver. Wow. So I thought at the time, I'm always like, oh, this is going to be great. But it turned out being a nightmare. The guy that ran Cleveland, I don't know if you knew much about that, but no. again, he and I didn't get along so well. <laughs> I'm seeing a common thread, uh, I was trend out. here. Yeah. I'm not easy to work with, I guess. I don't know. I <laughs> it, like it, sound, <clears throat> it sounds like it. Yeah. yeah. 
Hey, we're going to take a quick break, then we're going to ask you about Link Sold. The miracle of wine capturing a special time and place finds its essence in the Mir Cabernet Sauvignon Schweitzer Vineyard. Even before Jim Bear Dyke and Gustavo e. Gonzalez founded Mira, they dreamt of making a definitive Napa Valley Cabernet Sauvignon from this premier Grand Cru vineyard, first planted in 1885 in the heart of the Stags Leaps District. The Schweitzer family devotes incredible care in their stewardship of the land and the fruit it yields, making them ideal partners in Mira's quest for pure expressions of vineyard and varietal. This is my favorite part, John. Get ready for this. <laughs> the Mira Cabernet Sauvignon Schweitzer Vineyard, pour yourself a miracle. I feel like I pour myself a miracle every day. I do. You do pretty good. Where's your guys' glass of wine, by the way? What's going on? Uh, well, well, we have some juniors that probably listen to this, like one or two. So we have to be <laughs> somewhat PG, John. Uh, so Link Soul, how did that come come about? Yeah. So um, oddly enough, I um, I actually had started using that name. I really fell in love with the whole concept of Link Soul, how golf links souls together, you know, uh, back in the Ashworth days. And um, and I had been, uh, with Fidra, I'd been working with my nephew, Jeff Cunningham, who was a really amazing, he is a really amazing artist. And, uh, and, and we had thought, you know, at some point it might be cool to, start this new brand uh, because I felt like still golf clothing or lifestyle clothing was more geared towards, you know, athletic-y Nike Adidas stuff. And there wasn't that much, you know, kind of, I don't know. Th- to me, I, I like, I like to make clothes that cross over to everyday wear. Mm-hmm. That it's not like, wow, that's a golfer. It's more like, Oh, that guy looks good. He can, you know, go to his day job, sneak out for nine holes seamlessly without a problem, go to dinner that <laughs> night. I want to be that guy. So, <laughs> so anyway, that, so I feel, I, you know, it was, it's, we've been around now 10 years and we basically shook hands one day on starting this company and it's been very organic and a little bit more like, you know, you learn all this stuff over the years, um, how you want to, uh, maybe build a company and, you know, merge that with your daily life. And we've really tried to not be super corporate, but be, you know, be professional and responsible and, you know, deliver what we create, but yet, you know, we're not, we're driven more by community and and, uh, being part of the community and, and giving back than we are about, you know, making every last dollar, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, that's all. I mean, I think your stuff's great. I mean, I, I, I haven't worn much of it. I got your brother, Hank, gave me, you know, a couple of shirts there, like a little sweater from the event down in Hawaii. And I still I wear it every day. And that, I think that it's to the point. It's always hate when you walk off a golf course, you know, and then you're trying to go to dinner, you're having drinks with buddies, and you feel like you're just, you're still on the golf course. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but, right. you know, and I think that's the style that young kids, I think, really appreciate that and love that, right? They want to be able to, you know, the 50 some plus year old guys, they don't care. They, <laughs> they want people to know that they actually went golfing. But I think a lot of people, like you said, coming from work or whatever, kind of like that. It's very versatile, like you said, but it's high quality yeah. stuff too. And I think that's the one thing about your stuff, even with Ashworth and Fid- Fid- Fidra, you know, now with Link Soul, it's high quality stuff. Yeah. I like to make quality stuff for sure. Yeah. Um, it's, uh, you know, good value too, hopefully, you know, good, yeah. put as much quality into it as possible, but yet have it be, you know, affordable, I guess. Yeah. What, what is one color you would love to incorporate in your color wheel for Link Soul that you haven't yet? I'm asking for a friend or me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, every year we approach it, you know, it, 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 de- it depends. I mean, we, we don't do really like, we don't like the color. You're, that's not really a link soul color. We don't do really no. loud. It's not loud. This accentuates <laughs> my high cheekbones. I'm just teasing you. God. No, but uh, I, you know, I mean, it's um, our color theory is more based on what we, you know, consider Japanese color theory, which colors that come from nature, you know, purple that are a little bit more earthy and stuff like that. So purple lilac. 
Sure. We've done plenty yeah. of lilacs, light, <laughs> light purples and stuff like that. Yeah. Not bad. But not fuchsia or pink or Try not orange. To get bright. Yeah. I get it. You know, it's just, it's just, it's kind of our lane. Stay in your lane, you know? Yeah. <laughs> I'm in everybody's lane, John. So besides Link Soa, I hear you're uh, running a golf course now. Is that correct? Yeah. That is my other passion. Passion, uh, responsibility. <laughs> yeah. I'd go to Hill Park. So when you come out, you guys got to come play. Um, it's, it, it's a funny story. It was, it's something I, I played as a kid in junior golf. You know, it, it wasn't in our town, but it's, it was 20 minutes from where I grew up and they'd have junior golf tournaments every summer and stuff, but it's been around since 1952. It originally was a nine hole regulation, you know, part 36. And back in the, in the late eighties, this guy had the lease to it and the, the, the local government eminent domain, some of the land, you know, so he lost like part of two holes and he ended up somehow routing this 18 hole short course, which actually came out really cool. So it's, it's now an 18 hole par 65, you know, uh, 4,500 yards, wow. but it's like the biggest short course you'll ever play because like, it's got eight par threes, you know, three of them are like, you know, 185, you know, there's, couple of them are like 160 170 you know so you're hitting every club in the bag but the par fours are like between you know 300 to 350 and there's one par five <laughs> one so par five that's nice it's perfect it yeah. really is no carts so, huh no carts hopefully it's a walking only course uh, we do have carts oh. i know it's a bummer but it's pretty yeah. hilly you got to be like band and dunes I know. I would love to. We might do that someday because it's a great walk. It is a little up and up and down, but it's only forty five hundred yards, so it's not crazy. Yeah. Yeah. So it's eighteen holes. You said correct. Eighteen holes. Nice. Greens are great. It's got to be great. I mean, it's got to be that? great. It's got to be great because I think you know one. You're probably what's the average round take three, three and a half. Three and a half hours. Yep. Right. So people don't have the time. Right. But yet they're still yeah. playing 18 hole. I, that's what I always find like Nicholas. I remember a few years ago, we need to build 12 hole golf courses. Well, nobody wants to play 12. Hole. No. <laughs> they yeah. want to play nine or they want to play 18. Right. right. So, yeah. So even though it's short, but less, at least you get out for a few hours and get some exercise and, and you get to play yeah. the game you love and which is great that you've hit every shot in the bag, right? Or every yeah. club in the bag. That's what I love about links golf, you know, especially over. Yeah. It seems like you use, you use more of the clubs and you may only hit your eight iron once, but it might be in a chip right off the green. So, yeah, but it gives you a lot more options, but I think that's really cool. Yeah. I grew up on a public golf course. I don't know if you knew my parent, my grandfather built a little golf course, 6,300 yards. But, that's not you little. Know, well, it's not little, but I mean, it's not. It's not a custom Aaron National Hills or whatever. Right, <laughs> yeah, right. You know, it's not those or abandoned where you got 7,600 yard golf courses, but it's a fun place to play. It, it, it speaks for everybody. Right. So you can Is go out with there? your family. You can yeah. go out, you know, I could still play it today and have a good time. So are you, are you still around? Do you live around it or no, nah, we're a couple hours away. So okay. they're near uh, central. My parents own it now. So right. um, my so brother works around. there and everything. So, yeah, so it's still in the family. So, yeah, yeah. My, my dad's been the only superintendent there since 74. Oh, so that's so cool. And he's still working, you know? <laughs> yeah, so. no, that's awesome. See that I got my degree in agronomy. So, oh, okay. I'm, like, I'm the assistant. I'm in the assistant, assistant. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah. It's like when something goes wrong in my yard, I go, Hey dad, what do I need to do? <laughs> what I got to throw down? You yeah, know, and yeah. it works perfect. So but that's awesome. Is yeah. it? Do a lot of juniors use the use the facility? Oh yeah, we're the home of the North County Junior Golf awesome. Association, and we've started a caddy academy, a, a caddy oh, and cool. leadership academy. Do you do you head that? You teach people about being a caddy? I'm I'm <laughs> I'm, I'm involved in it. It's, you know, we do yeah. uh, ages thirteen to seventeen in the summer. We have a summer program, and it's cool because it's a nonprofit, so we raise money for it. So like you know, we also have this thing called the goat hill golf club it's like 150 bucks a year for guys to join 
So we got a really good crew of local guys. And then, you know, they mentor, they, you know, they take the kids out, they get to be, you know, uh, get these caddies, these, you know, young kids and they, you know, somewhat mentor them and, and they, and they get paid by the nonprofit and the guy gives them a little tip at the end. And it's kind of a win-win deal. Yeah. You know, would you rather go to church or caddy on Sunday mornings? Oh, easy caddy. That's, uh, that's how'd, how that go, how, how'd that go how'd that go over with your mom because she made an she made an that ultimatum was, to when you're a child right you know it, it worked out yeah <laughs> uh, that yeah. didn't work in my house if if the feet were on the floor at eight o'clock for 8 30 church but it's funny my dad would say you had to go to church my dad played tennis every sunday uh, figure that one out well your dad sound like played uh golf played every golf. sunday yeah. Oh. yeah that's awesome yeah so so how's the golf business out there with covid is it just oh man rocketing oh you it's just... been amazing yeah covid's yeah. been very good for golf yeah you know uh i'll give you a little example so 2019 because when we took over this course it was it was it's it had gone to crap i mean it was dirt it was weeds everywhere so we've been really working on it over the last you know, seven years, but it, and it started getting pretty good. And, um, 2019 full year, we did 28,000 rounds, you know, not, not bad. I mean, you know, every year we were doing more and more. And so this was a lot for us. So 2020, oh, in 11 months, we did 42,000 rounds. Wow. That was the difference with COVID. Where you closed down what? part of march and april or something we were closed down almost all of april i think it was yeah. basically april 1st to april 30th boom okay so, mm -hmm. yeah that's awesome isn't that crazy and it was weird because at the time you, you didn't know what was going to happen right it was like right. holy shit what's going on <laughs> right i was yeah. like oh my god we're gonna go broke this is it we're done you know and it was just yeah. it was heartache and then boy it came back and it was just like bam boom yeah Everyone flooded out. You, you know, the only place you can't play golf right now in the world is my home place, my home province, yeah. Ontario. Yeah. You cannot really? play golf in Ontario. Yeah. For wow. some reason, you can get COVID on a golf course. Is it still because Herb said told us that last week? Right? Yeah. My, I was talking to my brother in law yesterday. He asked me how was Bandon. I was at Bandon Dunes last week and I uh, hadn't talked to him in a couple of weeks. So I think he's really Jones and hard to play golf. And he says you still can't play golf in Ontario. They're in severe lockdown right now. Yeah. Well, I remember because we're real close. I mean, we're not far from Pennsylvania border. But last last year when that happened, Ohio did it shut down for what a week or something, and they opened it back up. But people were driving across the border, and they were coming over and playing in Ohio <laughs> when they lived in Pennsylvania, and then drive back. You know, so we're a couple hours from Pittsburgh, so a lot of those right. people would drive over and play mm -hmm. and go back. Are they doing that in Canada? But they can they drive no, over I to I don't think they are Quebec or anything? probably not. Okay, a little bit farther, like five hours. Well, if you're on the border, though. Oh yeah, yeah. I'll find yeah, out for you. Find out, yeah. That could be our yeah, next. Right. We could be a, that could be our next episode. Yeah. <laughs> we can t tell Ontario yeah. where to go play golf. Yeah. <laughs> so where's some of so you you're probably a world traveler and what have you with golf. Where are some of your favorite places, not in the United States to play golf? Well, obviously, the Lynx land is always number one. You know, Scotland, Ireland. I love Ireland. I've been to Ireland a, a yeah. bunch. Um, but then also, I mean, have you ever, have you guys ever been to Southeast Asia? Ben, have you been over to like Thailand? I've, I've been to Thailand and Korea and Hong Kong yeah. and uh, China and Japan. So all but of them. It, well, yeah. but Southeast would be more like... Uh, Thailand. What's the other? They they've been going the last few years. Uh, Kuala Lumpur, okay. um, yeah. down in that area. But. but the funny thing about Thailand, like he's he's playing pro tournaments. So as you go as as an amateur and you're playing with buddies, <laughs> it's it's wild because you go to these courses and and they love their golf and you go and you, you know like like because we make a lot of clothes in Thailand and and the people that I actually. I work with over there. They love golf too. So when I go on a business trip, we'll always put in some golf and, and you go to these courses and they're really nice, but you got 
every guy's got his own cart and his own caddy. So you got four, four carts and four, four. caddies. These little women, <laughs> yeah. these little right. outfits that are all buttoned up with their hats on and stuff like that. And they make like twenty bucks a round. That's a friend, tricky. Yeah, a friend of mine was out in Thailand. He said, "Here's my caddy," and I'm like, "You're joking me!" And it was like this older, older lady, yeah. and carried two bags. Yeah. Do you see any elephants or anything? <laughs> play that was one of the the course we played i I forget the event but it was a johnny walker but i forget what the course was and yeah they they said be careful the (laughs) elephant they might come out (laughs) because you're right in the jungle it seemed like yeah or snakes too yeah but yeah i didn't see any of those thank god (laughs) but for tigers it's all the elephants they were kind of along the fence you did not see really yeah just wild elephants yeah (laughs) they're everywhere over there aren't they i mean yeah yeah Easy, yeah, for sure. So, like, what do you let them play through, or like, what happens? It's kind of like when you, I haven't been to Africa, but the, the Sun City event, they used to say how oh, like lions and <laughs> everything would just cross the fairway. Like, it's like it was basic. Who was that? Uh, Johan Rupert, right? He built the right, yeah, yeah. I think it was his course. It was basically a safari right in the middle. Really, yeah. <sighs> Should send you there. You'd be a nice <laughs> snack for a. <laughs> yeah, Luke lions. didn't make the cut. He got eaten by the lions. Yeah. <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah. So, what is a huge? What does the future hold for John Ashworth, the man, the myth, the legend? God, take it day by day, man. Just happy to get up and have another day at it. You know, um, you know, we're just Link Souls plugging away. Goat Hill Park's plugging away. Um, yeah, really, just try to stay in the moment and do the best I can really simple, simple. keep it simple simple keep it simple yeah. I love it yeah the kiss kiss acronym keep it simple, yeah. simple stupid keep it simple yeah. I love what you said in the before like stay in your lane right that's a great yeah. advice yeah uh, her page said that to me all the time when I golf to be Ben Curtis don't be somebody else I can never be John Ashworth or Luke yeah. Taylor right be you yourself I don't, well, I don't want to. Be I'm going to tell my wife when she, <laughs> she gets mad at me for something, I'm going to see Melissa stay in your lane. Right. How do you think that would I work? Mean, no. Was that good marital advice? You think that might be tough. You better be. <laughs> <laughs> She'll better be, be buddy, you're in my lane and you're yeah. driving my car. I'm like, okay. So we're going to do a little bonus with uh, John. Thanks for listening. Uh, John, you're going to hold on one second. Um, just remember to subscribe, rate, and review. Um, you got anything, Ben, other than your queen wave? Well, I'll do my Arnold Palmer. You're Arnold Palmer. Yeah. We'll keep drinking his iced tea. Yeah, perfect. Yeah. So thanks for listening. Thanks, John. And uh, John, thanks yeah. for joining us. Yeah. We're going to stick with him. Uh, check us out on uh, Patreon or our site. We've got some more stuff with John and all our guests. So thanks for listening. And we'll catch you guys next week.